What's going on everyone? Steven here from TechMaker Studio. This is building a decentralized Twitter clone with React.js and Aleph.im part 13, I think. Yeah, I think we're on 13. So when we left off in the last episode, we had just kind of started styling up our post uh, form that we have in this modal here. And um, I wasn't really thrilled with how it was looking. So I kind of went over to Twitter itself to kind of look at what they do. An interesting thing with Twitter is you have this essentially solid black background and when we click tweet the overlay is actually kind of a lighter color and the the text box becomes gray here which I think could be kind of a I didn't mean to click post one other thing we have to deal with is the fact that we don't have an X on our on our uh, post form, so we need to add that. So we may do that first. We may go ahead and add a little X up here to close it. And I'm trying to decide right now in real time whether we should keep this sort of light text here First of all, that's messed up, so we need to make that because the text is invisible. Um, so yeah, that's what this episode is basically going to be about, is fixing the styling on this box and potentially fixing the actual animation on the loader. If we don't get to that, that will be the next episode. Uh, but I think I'm going to kind of mimic Twitter here to some extent, but let's see. Okay, so what I want to do... If you remember how we set this up in the first place, we have our app.js. And I kind of worked ahead a little bit here, so let me undo that. Basically, we have this post modal form. We have this modal open that we're passing in. Uh, modal open and set modal open are up here. And then inside of our modal, we say show if the modal is open. So what I want to do is just have something inside of here. Let's just have a a href equals nothing basically. On click equals uh, close. And let's see. Um, let's make it just an X for now. We'll come back to that. Um, if we save, it's going to fail because close doesn't exist so we'll say const close equals e which is the event my first ever job interview i got asked the question what's the default argument that's always passed to a function in javascript and the question was weirdly asked in my opinion but the answer he wanted was the event um, the correct question should have actually been what's passed to an event handler but it is what it is. Um, e dot prevent default. Um, okay, so basically we're stopping the click from doing anything, and then the next thing we want to do is say um, props dot set. Uh, what is that called? Props dot set modal open. So this is why I, I'd kind of typed ahead here. Um, Fun fact, I didn't actually get it working, so we'll see if this works because I changed the way I'm doing it now. Set modal open false. Okay, so everything is saved. We have this little tiny X here. If I click it, it goes away. Post something, little X goes away. Cool. All right, so now that that's working, Oh, that was funny. If we click here and click X, now that's blue. So I guess that's the focus color. So we may have to fix that. Um, anyway, not the point. So we want to style this. Let's go to the Google. And I want to just search for, I guess I could have just typed this in upstairs in the search bar. Multiplication sign. So I want to copy this font here because I don't want to use just like the letter X. I want to use the actual like close icon, but I also don't really want to go hunt down an icon library. 
at the moment. So we can swap for this, which looks more like a close. Um, and now we have our little X up here. Um, I'm trying to decide. Let's see if we want to put this inside of a modal.header. And then we'll close the modal.header. And let's see what this looks like. Okay, so now we have that right there. And let's do this. So let's inspect this, first of all. And so we have modal header. Okay, this is not going to be too bad. So we'll go to our app SCSS and we'll say dot modal header. If I can type. And then we'll set up our a tag here and say um, color white text decoration none font size um, let's do 1.4 rem and let's save that and see what that looks like that needs to be bigger um, let's do two okay and then for the for the modal header let's do border bottom none of too many semicolons and also what i want to do is um i want to get rid of any kind of like padding top and bottom on this i think and i th i can probably do that by doing um in our modal in our modal a component let's do class name equals py dash zero and let's see what that does okay so that kind of shrank everything up so if we look at this now we can see there's not a padding on the top of the bottom if you don't know what I'm talking about let me just see if I can edit this in place here um, I'm going to start trying to do better explanations of certain things in these uh, videos but if you uh, like developer tools in Chrome is really amazing um, and if you haven't looked at it much you might not understand exactly what's going on if I move my mouse you won't see but watch right here if you see this green that represents padding and if you scroll all the way down uh, it's explaining what you're seeing so if you hover over the padding so you have the actual element then you have the padding and then you have the border which there's none in the margin which there's none in this case um, but anyway, so we have the padding set up to be basically zero um, on the top and bottom. And then we have the X here. Cool. So that's fixed. All right. So what I want to do now is work on the actual layout of uh, this modal and what's inside of it and then the colors. So I definitely don't want a label. And let's refresh and see how that looks without a label and again let's look at Twitter so Twitter it's all one color and I do like that vibe so let's swap everything to be one color and see what that looks like um, that's telegram let's go to to the code actually uh, where is it okay so modal content Let's do background color. Let's just do gray three on both things for now. Okay, cool. So this actually already just looks more like Twitter. Um, we definitely don't want this outline and we want the font to be white. So let's, let's inspect this really quick. What I don't understand is why that text isn't white to start. Um, so let's... Okay, there we go. So maybe let's just add an important and be done with it. And then what is that? That's the outline, outline, none, important. Let's try that. So if we click, no, that doesn't fix anything. Let's add um, box shadow, none, important here. I'm not a big fan of important, but there we go. Okay, so if we get rid of outline. Does that do anything? 
All right, so we don't need the outline. What we do need is the color white important and then box shadow none. Do we need the important here? Let's just do a quick check. Yes. Okay, so box shadow none important, color white important. Let's go add that. Uh, so important on this and then box shadow none important. All right, let's refresh and let's trigger this modal again. Cool, so now we can type here. I don't know if we need to get rid of that or not, the actual resize. Um, how do we do that if we if we even wanted to? Uh, text area, no resize handle. Uh, resize none. Let's add that here. <clears throat> So this right now is just for style reasons. And you can already see that it went away. So now we just have this empty box. And I don't I don't actually hate that. Um, the, the text in this should be kind of limited. So this is about right now. Um, it's not perfect, but it's getting close. I, I like this quite a bit. So let's see what this looks like if we actually pose something. So one thing, if we look back at Twitter, one thing I'm noticing is they have the full rounding on the tweet button over here. And then here, after we start typing, we get this illuminated tweet button with the, uh, the rounded edges. Again, I don't want to copy Twitter. Um, not exactly. So um, I guess this is okay for now. This button doesn't look great to me. Um, we need to figure out something better to say than post something probably. But in my opinion, this is definitely starting to look better. Um, let's just say like testing the new UI. Um, and then we'll click post. All right. So what we wanted to see here was our progress bar. And it does indeed look like a progress bar. So what should be happening, we need some kind of light animation here. And then obviously maybe some text saying, hey, we're posting that to the network, but let's click sign. And then it appears just straight away. Um, what's weird is it says 20 seconds ago. That's pretty strange. Um, I'm wondering if like the actual like time is when you, hmm. Okay, so I'm not logged in now. Let's refresh here. Um, that's weird. So it kind of logs you out. There's a few bugs. But what I wanted to see, if I click post, I'm wondering if the time that I click that is actually the time that the post represents. So like if I waited for five minutes and then I click sign, I'm wondering if it would say like uh, five minutes ago or something. So I don't know how long it's been, but let's say it's been 30 or 40 seconds. So if I click sign, it goes away. <clears throat> it's been 24 seconds. I think that must be the case. So let's try it one more time with uh, post something, ASDF, post, and really quickly. How long? So that one's three seconds. So it must be the time that you actually click po like the post action it probably actually takes that time and puts that into the object. And then the signature is just kind of confirming. It's not the actual time. It's kind of confusing, but I think it makes sense probably. Anyway, that's a whole different topic. I was just, I just noticed and got curious. Okay, cool. So we've got a user interface here that's resembling Twitter. I mean, loosely, I'm going to discard this tweet. Um, but you've got, you know, on the left, obviously, there's a lot more menu items. On ours, we just have the post something button. Then you've got, you know, rich text kind of stuff here uh, where you have, like, cash tags and hashtags and images and videos and stuff. We just have text. We don't have usernames. We can't at anybody or hashtag anything yet. But in terms of the actual mechanics, I don't hate that. I mean, it, 
it does kind of darken everything and then this kind of sits on top so that's fine i think that's the same color as what we have here but it sits on top nicely and it darkens everything so i'm okay with that as an intermediate solution um i'm just thinking so in the next video what i want to do is wrap up that loading animation and get that to be something slick um right now obviously it just kind of is a static loading thing um i don't know if we'll stick with like a loading bar hold on a sec let's just kind of uh, post something uh testing again so maybe what we should do so we have this sort of loading bar, obviously. What I'm wondering is if it would look cooler with like, uh, let's do loading CSS animation. Uh, Loading.io, they always have some cool stuff. So let's see what they got. Um, I'm wondering if it would be cooler with something like this, like these dots or this even. Um, do they have any other ones? I don't know. But I'm going to look around a little bit and we'll see like what options we have. But we basically in the next episode are just going to finish up the loading animation and uh, then call it a day on the front end for now. We're definitely going to come back and tighten things up even more. This is like barely getting started. But at least it looks a little bit more like a real app right now. I mean, it kind of did before, but the gradients and stuff were a little bit specific. Um, I wanted to kind of make a more generic design that anybody could take and then tweak in whichever direction they wanted. But anyway, I think this is going well. Um, hopefully you're getting something out of this, and um, hopefully it's uh, useful to you. And um, if it is, be sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, share it with all your friends and family and everybody else who might be interested. And um, I'll talk to you in the next episode.